Welcome to worship this morning. Good to have you with us. A couple announcements as we begin. Uh, no school this week, uh, so if you have any, uh, anything to do with the school office, uh, do give a call first. Make sure that, uh, that someone is around. Uh, our coverage is going to be a little limited. I will continue our Wednesday midweek uh, Lenten journey together uh, this Wednesday evening, supper at uh, 5.30. Uh, I understand it's uh, Grandma Pat's secret sloppy Joe recipe uh, that we're continuing on. So we want to uh, so enjoy that together uh, and then worship and uh, worship up here uh, at uh, at 630. Uh, there is one more weekend uh, to bring in uh, a diaper bag or baby blankets uh, for our uh, collection for the Alliance Women's Clinic. So if you're able to uh, participate in that, we appreciate it. Uh, it's nice to see that uh, collection growing uh, in, uh, in the connecting link. Uh, the Holy Week schedule is on the back of your uh, bulletin. Uh, maybe that can, uh, you can tack that up on the fridge. Uh, also, just a continued reminder or encouragement to uh, join us for the prayer vigil after the uh, Holy Saturday service. Uh, just choose a time uh, in that evening to be in the sanctuary in private prayer uh, as a part of your uh, Holy Week uh, celebration. A uh, word of congratulations uh, this morning uh, to Stephen Sporin. Uh, he is uh, a newly minted Eagle Scout uh, and following in a uh, commendable family tradition. Uh, that is a big part of the Sporin family. We congratulate uh, Stephen. His, uh, his uh, banquet was last night. In our prayers uh, this morning, uh, we remember uh, Judy Hertini, uh, unexpectedly diagnosed for and received right away a pacemaker uh, and is recovering well. Uh, so, that, uh, so we give thanks to God for that that, that was something that uh, came, uh, became uh, recognized uh, and could be attended to uh, so promptly. Uh, we begin uh, this morning uh, with uh, our senior handbells, uh, Just As I Am.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with the intro. It. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for He will pluck my feet out of the net. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may gate on the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. For He will hide me in His shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Glory be to the Father to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end Amen My eyes are ever toward the Lord for He will pluck my feet out of the net The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, Your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, You receive us as Your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge Your merciful goodness, give thanks for all Your benefits, and serve You in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, Your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with You and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 42. For a long time I have held my peace. I have kept still and restrained myself. Now I will cry out like a woman in labor. I will gasp and pant. I will lay waste mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn their rivers into islands and dry up the pools. And I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know. In paths that they have not known, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light and rough places into level ground. These are the things I do, and I do not forsake them. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Uh, for our gospel reading this morning, we have divided that into uh, to two parts. I invite you to stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the ninth chapter. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth and asked his disciple and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not this man that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had, been, who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. Others said, No, but he is like him. He kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees asked, again how, asked him again how he had received his sight. And he said to them, he put mud on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him, since he has opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We speak together the words of the gradual. O come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But how he now sees we do not know, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give glory to God, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether he is a sinner I do not know. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Why, this is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born in utter sin, and would you teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, 
and it is he who is speaking to you. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard these things and said to him, Are we also blind? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say we see, your guilt remains. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the hymn. Grace to you and peace from God, our Heavenly Father, from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The uh, text for our message today comes from our Gospel lesson from John chapter 9, one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. This is our text. Dear friends in Jesus Christ, our living Lord and Savior. A smart man, a thirsty woman, a blind beggar, a grieving sister. 
As Pastor Ganey has introduced the last couple of weeks, each of these people appears in one of our four readings from the Gospel of John during the month of March in this Lenten season. Each of them encountered Jesus. Each was changed by Jesus. And once again, as Pastor Ganey has asked over the last couple of weeks, I ask you to place yourself in their shoes and consider what is Jesus saying to you and perhaps how is God seeking to change you? And to place yourself in the sandals of this man born blind, I'd ask you to close your eyes for just a moment and experience the darkness. You see, darkness was all this man knew. He never saw the face of his parents. He never saw the beauty of a sunrise or a sunset. All he ever experienced was darkness. He knew his parents by the sound of their voice, possibly by their smell. You know, from what we've heard, when one is blind, they pay more attention to their other senses to help them live in this world. But for a man born blind, it would be a dark, dark world. Because you are blind, you can't work. And so when you became of age, your parents would have taken you to the local rabbi and he would have verified that you were indeed blind. And he would have given you a special mat that you would beg on. That mat would signify that you were indeed unable to work and you were justified in being able to legally beg. And so there you are one day begging on the corner, and you hear a group of people walking by, and they're talking about you. Remember, your hearing is impeccable. Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And you know, I can almost hear the blind man saying, what are you talking about, Willis? How could I sin in my mother's womb? What could my parents do that was so wrong that would cause me to be like this? Unfortunately, that was the prevailing thought of the day. If something catastrophic happened to you or to your family, it was because someone did something that was terribly wrong. To be honest, we've had similar thoughts. When something bad happens to a, a bad person, don't we think something along the lines of, he had it coming? And we actually have a name for it. We call it karma. When someone behaves badly and something bad happens to them, that's karma. But Jesus' words to us today tell us that God doesn't punish people for what we do. After all, Jesus has already paid for all of our sins. He has paid for everything on the cross. He said on the cross, it is finished. And so it's done. There are, of course, consequences for the things we do. I mean, if you rob a bank, you are most likely going to jail. So there are times when our thinking isn't much different from theirs. Now normally, Jesus would ignore things like that and go on and teach his point. A couple of weeks ago when Pastor Ganey was preaching, that smart man Nicodemus asked, how can a man be born blind when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus completely ignores it and goes on and says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. But where this blind man is concerned, Jesus answers the question straight on. It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. 
You see, God is going to change this man's life. Not just by giving him sight so that he can be a productive member of society, but Jesus is going to change his spiritual life, and he does it in a very remarkable way. So after that brief little statement about the works of God being displayed in this man, who was just a passive bystander in this whole situation, remember, he was just begging by the side of the road. He didn't ask to be healed. He didn't call out to Jesus like the ten lepers, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. It was all because the disciples asked that silly question that the man is healed. And so Jesus spits on the ground, he makes some mud, and he anoints the man's eyes. And here we have the Christ, the anointed one, anointing the man's eyes with mud. And he sends him to the pool of Siloam, which means sent. And our text says, so we went and watched, and he came back seeing. What a wonderful blessing for this man. He can look at his father and mother for the first time in his life. He can see the beauty of the temple for the first time in his life. If he were here in the United States, he could see the beauty of Niagara Falls and the Grand Canyon, but he can definitely see the beauty of a sunrise and a sunset for the first time in his life. But God is not done working with this man just yet. Just because he has his sight back, that's not enough. There is still a matter of his sin. His sin may not have caused his blindness, but it was still a problem in his life, and that needs to go away. And the only way to fix the problem of sin is to have faith in Jesus as our Savior. But God and the Holy Spirit convert this guy in a way that I don't think we see anywhere else in Scripture. He uses other people who don't believe in Jesus to convert the man. In fact, he uses Jesus' enemies to convert the man. To, he causes the, this man to dig in his heels and slowly become to believe in Jesus as the Son of God. You see, God uses the Pharisees, along with the Holy Spirit, to convert this man. You see, it just so happens that when Jesus made the mud, which is, you know, that's a terribly, terribly difficult task, it was a Sabbath when no work was to be done. And so when they bring the man to the Pharisees, they aren't happy with the situation. You know, I think it's funny in the text the first time the man tells his neighbors what happened, he says, the man called Jesus, made mud, and anointed my eyes, and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. So I went and I washed and received my sight. But when he talks to the Pharisees, he changes his story to, he put mud on my eyes, I wash and I see. Notice how it got shorter. He left out the part about making the mud. And so you already get the idea that the blind man is trying to protect Jesus. But still, the Pharisees aren't happy with the situation. They're rarely happy with Jesus. And so their response is, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. Others, of course, are saying, how can a man who is sinner do such signs? And so they're divided. But the popular opinion among them was that Jesus was a sinner and a radical. But with the division among the Pharisees, they ask him, what do you say about him? And the blind man says, he's a prophet. So you see, the conversion is happening all because of the Pharisees. And of course, I said, the Holy Spirit. Well, the Pharisees question the parents, and that gets them nowhere. 
So they bring the man back and ask him again a second time how he was healed. Give glory to God. We know this man is a sinner. And you know, I love the man's answer. Whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. Again, the story gets shorter. He went from the man called Jesus made mud or anointed my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight to, though I was blind, now I see. Which, of course, is why we sang Amazing Grace as our sermon hymn. But the Pharisees keep pressing. They ask him again how he was healed. I mean, isn't that the way police investigators work? They ask you over and over again what happened, trying to catch you changing your story. And so they ask again, and he responds, I have already told you, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become a disciple? And so we've gone from him proclaiming Jesus as a prophet to the blind man admitting that he's a disciple of Jesus. All because the Pharisees maintained that the guy who gave him sight for the first time in his life was a sinner. Well, the man, he ends up giving the Pharisees a nice little sermon. Why, this is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. Unfortunately, the result of that sermon is that he's kicked out of the temple. He is in today's words, excommunicated. My favorite part of the whole situation comes next. Because Jesus hears that the man has been cast out, that he's been excommunicated, and Jesus seeks the man out. Jesus personally and purposely goes looking for the man. And he asks, do you believe in the Son of Man? And the man who formerly could not see looks at Jesus and says, who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? And Jesus replies, and get this, this is very important. Jesus looks at him and says, you have seen him. And to a guy who has never seen anything in his whole entire life, to be standing there looking at his Lord and Savior is absolutely amazing. And he says, you have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. And right then and right there, the man just says, Lord, I believe. And he falls down on the ground on his face at Jesus' feet, and he worships him. He is truly a disciple. So again, put your man, you put yourselves in the man's sandal. You were just sitting by the side of the road. You have never seen anything in your whole entire life. You may have heard a thing or two about Jesus as people talked about him walking on the road that you're begging on, but you've never really formed an opinion about him one way or another. And yet because the disciples ask a stupid question about your spiritual life, your life here on earth, and your eternal life are changed forever in the matter of a couple hours. God does some amazing things in our lives as well. Through baptism, he gives us his Holy Spirit. Luther says in his explanation of the third article of the Apostles' Creed, I, cannot, I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. 
but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the one true faith. God changed the blind man, and God has and can change you. He brings you to faith, and he gives you your life. He makes you a child of God and forgives you all your sins. And just as the blind man's neighbors didn't recognize him after he received his sight, people will not recognize you after God has gotten under your skin and given you faith and changed you into a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God, which far surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, now and forevermore. Amen. pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Great physician, enlighten our eyes by your blessed gospel and hide us in your shelter in the day of trouble. Provide a home in your church for those cast out by this world and unite them with us in the confession of your name. Lord, in your mercy, Father, through holy baptism, you have brought us into the light of Christ. Guide us always in your ways and teach us to know your will, that we would do what is good and right and true. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, those who wait for your salvation have the promise that you will not forsake them. Lead those who wander in darkness through rough places that they would find the way of righteousness. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious Father, you have promised that what we suffer does not condemn us, but instead leads us to you. Sustain the afflicted in body or soul. We pray especially this day for Judy Hurtini, Kristen Baker, Dylan Malkowski, Judy Scheffner, Pastor Bob Wolf, Helen Keller, Marilyn Valancourt, David Howe, Keith Mertens, Krista Parker, for Ken and Clint Fick, Kim Weber, Lola Hargrove, Marty Berger, John Pollock, Myrna Hoover, Ron Benson, Luca and Micah Flick, and Tyler Zelko, that they would take heart, trust you for healing, and find you even in the midst of their trials. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, everyone who believes in Jesus as Lord will not be put to shame. Unite your people in a right confession of your word and free all brothers and sisters in Christ from disagreement over your truth. Bring us with penitent hearts to receive the great riches of your Son's body and blood. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying... Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And may the peace of our Lord be with you always.
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace.